When I was an undergraduate student 37 years ago, my professor told me a story about three hunters out here in the coast range being found dead, and there was a newt boiled in their coffee pot. So his question to me was, go find out if these newts are poisonous. Edmund Brody Jr. has studied the rough-skinned newt ever since. The last decade or so with his son, Edmund Brody III. This is probably the most poisonous animal in the world with enough skin toxin to kill tens of thousands of mice or perhaps a hundred people. Of course, they don't bite, so this isn't really dangerous holding it unless I were to eat it, uh, which I won't. The question was, why should a small animal like this be so many times more toxic than necessary to kill all predators? The Brodies discovered another animal is responsible. I'm going to head over to these brambles. Okay. The common garter snake thrives in these parts. Harmless to humans, it feeds on earthworms, frogs, and toads. But there's one prey in the snake's diet few other predators ever touch. She's got a food item. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a pretty big object. I don't know if it's a if it's big enough to be a newt, but it could be. Come on, honey. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah here it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> How about that? It had eaten a full-size male newt. Yeah. This species of garter snake is the, the predator that we think is driving the evolution of the high toxin levels in the newt. This is the only thing that can survive an encounter with a newt. It's the only thing that can therefore represent a selective pressure for increasing toxicity. As the snakes get better at resisting the effects of the toxin, the prey has to evolve higher levels of toxin. You can think of this as this sort of escalating, counter-escalating arms race between the predator and the newt, the prey. But the toxin does take a toll. Some snakes are slowed down. Others are immobilized for a few hours after eating a newt. In the lab, the Brodies can measure the garter snake's resistance to the toxin. They coax a baby snake down a track, wired with motion sensors, and record its time. Then, they inject the snake with a small amount of purified toxin to simulate the effects of eating a newt. Now the snake is raced again. A snake with low resistance can be stalled to a standstill. A resistant snake is much less affected by the toxin, but it too pays a price. The more resistant a snake, the more slowly it moves without any toxin. The snake experiences a cost from evolving the resistance. That snake would be more susceptible to its own predators. So there's a trade-off between speed in a snake and the level of resistance. It's now abundantly clear that uh, evolution is driven not just by physical forces, such as storms and fire and climatic change, but much more by biological forces. That is, particularly the way species interact with one another, cooperating with one another, parasitizing one another, preying on one another. What made the lion fierce and the zebra fast? What sparked the development of tooth and claw? The deadly dance of predator and prey drives evolution. <laughs>